When we look at the architecture of our solar system, we see a pattern of almost mechanical elegance. Rocky worlds cluster close to the heat of the parent star. Then, separated by a vast asteroid belt, comes the realm of the gas kings, Jupiter and Saturn, rotating like majestic sentinels, adorned with bands of colorful clouds and brilliant rings. Everything seems to follow a logic of formation, a protoplanetary disk that spun and condensed in an orderly way. But if we venture beyond Saturn's orbit, into the deep darkness where sunlight is nothing more than a bright star in the sky, we find something that breaks this harmony. We find a world that seems out of place, a planet that defies the rules we apply to its neighbors, a pale cyan sphere, silent and lethally cold. This is Uranus. For centuries, humanity looked at the sky and saw only as far as Saturn. Uranus is the first of the modern planets, the first to be discovered not by the naked eyes of ancient Sumerians or Greeks, but through telescope technology. When William Herschel spotted it in 1781, he expanded the boundaries of our cosmic backyard overnight, doubling the size of the known solar system. Yet, more than 200 years later, this ice giant remains, in many ways, a stranger. A world of paradoxes, frozen violence, and features so bizarre that if we saw them in a science fiction movie, we might accuse the writers of exaggeration. To understand the strangeness of Uranus, we first need to understand the absolute isolation in which it exists. Getting there is no trivial task. It is an odyssey that tests the limits of human patience and engineering. The average distance from Uranus to the Sun is 2.9 billion kilometers. It is a number so vast that it loses meaning on a human scale. Light, traveling at the maximum speed allowed by the universe, takes about 2 hours and 40 minutes to cross the abyss between the Sun and the planet. This means that, if you were orbiting Uranus and looked at Earth through a telescope, you would be seeing the past from almost three hours ago. But for a spacecraft made of metal and driven by chemical propulsion, reality is much slower. The only visit we have ever made to this world, NASA's Voyager 2 probe, took nine and a half years to get there, having been launched in 1977 and arriving only in January 1986. And Voyager benefited from a rare planetary alignment, the Grand Tour, which allowed it to steal gravitational speed from Jupiter and Saturn to be catapulted into the depths of the outer system. If we decided to send a dedicated mission today, a probe that needed to enter orbit to study the planet over the long term, instead of simply flying past as Voyager did, the journey would be even more complex. To slow down and be captured by Uranus's gravity, the spacecraft could not arrive too fast. Current estimates for a Uranus orbiter and probe mission suggest a cruise time between 12 and 15 years, depending on propulsion technology and available gravitational assists. It is a journey that consumes a significant portion of a scientist's career. The person who designs the mission on Earth may already be retired when the first image arrives. And what would we find at the end of this long journey? At first glance, Uranus might seem disappointing. When Voyager 2 sent back its first close-up images, the world saw a blue-green billiard ball, almost featureless. There was no great red spot like Jupiter's, no glorious rings like Saturn's. It looked static, almost dead. But this visual serenity is a lie. The cyan color comes from methane in the upper atmosphere, which absorbs red sunlight and reflects blue and green. And beneath this hydrocarbon haze lies the strangest environment in the solar system. The first glaring anomaly is thermal. Uranus is classified as an ice giant, distinct from the gas giants. While Jupiter and Saturn are composed mainly of hydrogen and helium, Uranus's mass is dominated by heavier elements such as water, ammonia, and methane, which astronomers collectively call ices even though they exist in supercritical fluid states under immense pressure. The mystery lies in the temperature. Although Neptune is much farther from the Sun, about 1.6 billion kilometers farther than Uranus, Uranus holds the record for the coldest temperature ever measured at the tropopause of any planet, 
minus 224 degrees Celsius. But what intrigues planetary scientists is not just the absolute cold, it is the energy balance. Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune radiate more heat into space than they receive from the Sun. They still retain primordial heat from their formation, or generate heat through gravitational contraction and material differentiation. Uranus does not. For some unknown reason, Uranus's internal heat appears to have been switched off. It radiates almost exactly the same amount of energy that it absorbs from the Sun. The planet's core seems thermally isolated from the upper layers. Or perhaps something catastrophic drained its energy billions of years ago. This impossible cold creates a sluggish atmosphere, where storms are rare, but when they occur, they are violent and massive, driven not by heat from below, but by dynamics we still struggle to understand. However, the feature that defines Uranus, its signature in the cosmos, is its tilt. All the planets in the solar system spin like tops on a table, with their axes more or less perpendicular to the plane of their orbits. Earth has a modest tilt of 23.5 degrees, which gives us our pleasant seasons. Uranus, on the other hand, spins on its side. Its axial tilt is 97.7 degrees. Its equator is where the poles should be. It does not spin like a top. It rolls around the sun like a bowling ball on a lane. The implications of this for anyone living in the clouds of Uranus are terrifying. Imagine the seasons. Because Uranus takes 84 Earth years to complete one orbit around the sun, each season lasts 21 years. Due to this extreme tilt during the summer solstice at one pole, the sun shines directly overhead, circling the sky without ever setting. That is 21 years of uninterrupted daylight, where the sun rises to the zenith and sinks again, but never touches the horizon. Meanwhile, the other hemisphere plunges into 21 years of total darkness, a long and merciless winter. Only during the equinoxes, when the planet's equator aligns with the sun, does Uranus experience day and night cycles that resemble what we consider normal, with the planet spinning rapidly on its axis every 17 hours and 14 minutes. But as the years pass and the planet advances along its orbit, the darkness or the eternal light once again consume the poles. What could have caused such a deviation? Orbital physics does not allow a planet to tilt itself this way. The prevailing theory is violence. It is believed that early in the solar system's history, when orbits were still chaotic and space was filled with planetary debris, Uranus suffered a cataclysmic collision. A protoplanet, perhaps the size of Earth or larger, slammed into it with enough force not to destroy it, but to knock it over. This collision would have consequences beyond the tilt. It may explain the thermal mystery mentioned earlier. The impact could have expelled much of the primordial heat, or reorganized the planet's interior in such a way that heat became trapped in deep layers, unable to convect to the surface. Uranus is, in essence, a victim of a cosmic traffic accident, spinning dizzy and wounded for eternity. And the strangeness continues when we look at the invisible, the magnetic field. On Earth, our magnetic field is generated by the dynamo of our molten iron core. The magnetic north lies reasonably close to geographic north, and the center of the magnetic field aligns with the center of the planet. It is an orderly shield. On Uranus, magnetism is absolute chaos. When Voyager 2 flew past, its instruments detected something scientists initially thought was a reading error. Uranus's magnetic axis is tilted by 60 degrees relative to its axis of rotation. If this happened on Earth, the magnetic north pole would be somewhere near Rio de Janeiro. Moreover, the generator of this field is not at the planet's center. It is offset by one-third of the planet's radius toward the rotational south pole. This suggests that Uranus's magnetic field is not generated in the core, but in a vast ocean of salty water and supercritical ammonia, muddy and conductive, churning within the planet's mantle. This bizarre geometry creates a magnetosphere that flickers, 
As the planet spins on its side and the magnetic field rotates at an angle, Uranus's magnetosphere opens and closes to the solar wind daily. It is a magnetic corkscrew sweeping through space, creating auroras that do not occur at the poles like on Earth, but can appear near the equator or dance randomly across the upper atmosphere, depending on the time of day on Uranus. We cannot talk about Uranus without mentioning its companions. While Saturn is the Lord of the Rings, Uranus has its own set. They were discovered almost by accident in 1977, when astronomers observed Uranus passing in front of a distant star. The star's light blinked several times before and after the planet passed. Those were the rings. Unlike Saturn's majestic icy rings that reflect sunlight like mirrors, Uranus's rings are dark, composed of large particles and dust mixed with organic compounds darkened by radiation. They are narrow, ghostly, and of course, vertical, encircling the tilted planet's equator like a target in the sky. And between these rings and beyond them, orbit 27 known moons. Here again, Uranus shows its unique personality. While most moons in the solar system are named after figures from Greek and Roman mythology, Uranus's moons honor English literature. They are named after characters from the works of William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope, Oberon, Titania, Ariel, Umbriel. But the most fascinating of them is Miranda. Miranda is small, less than 500 kilometers in diameter, yet it has the most tortured surface in the entire solar system. It looks as if it were broken into pieces and haphazardly reassembled by a giant child. There are deep canyons called coronae, slicing across the surface. The largest of them is Verona Rupes, a cliff of pure ice that drops 20 kilometers into the abyss. To give a sense of scale, the Grand Canyon on Earth is about 1.6 kilometers deep. If you fell from the top of Verona Rupes, given Miranda's low gravity, it would take about 12 minutes to reach the bottom. It is a landscape of nightmare and sublime beauty, geological evidence that even in the cold outskirts of the system, tectonic activity and tidal forces can sculpt complex worlds. Recently, scientists re-examined Voyager data and proposed that some of Uranus's larger moons, such as Ariel and Umbriel, may hide oceans of liquid water beneath their icy crusts kept warm by gravitational interactions and insulated by layers of hardened ice. Suddenly, the Uranian system is not just a bizarre place. It becomes a potential target in the search for habitable environments, or at least for prebiotic chemistry. As our technology advances and we look beyond our own solar system, we have discovered thousands of exoplanets orbiting other stars. And one of the greatest surprises of modern astronomy is that the most common class of planets in the galaxy appears to be sub-Neptunes, or mini Uranuses, planets with sizes and masses similar to our ice giant. This casts Uranus in a new light. It is no longer just the eccentric member of the family, the planet with the funny name in English, or the target of easy jokes. It is, in fact, the archetype. To understand how planets form in the Milky Way, to understand the diversity of worlds out there, we desperately need to understand Uranus. We need to understand why it stopped growing before becoming a gas giant like Jupiter. We need to understand the complex chemistry of its atmosphere, where diamonds rain down toward a core that may not be solid, but a dense soup of exotic materials. We need to understand how a magnetic field can exist in such disorder. The scientific community is calling for a return the Planetary Science Decadal Survey, which defines NASA's priorities for the next decade, has placed an orbital mission to Uranus among the highest priorities for space exploration. If approved and launched in the early 2030s, the probe would arrive there in the 2040s. Uranus waits, spinning silently in its cold darkness, guarding the secrets of its violent history. It is a reminder that the universe has no obligation to make sense to us nor to follow the patterns of symmetry we find pleasing. It is chaotic, it is extreme, and it is absolutely fascinating. Uranus is the planet that breaks the rules, and that is exactly why we need to go back there. Subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, and share. Thank you, 
and see you next time.